So we, we've kind of talked in general, you know, coming out of every winter. This this winter particularly, if if they are seeing damage where turf needs to be replaced, either sod or, or seed, um, you know, how how are we go about how do how do they go about evaluating this? And maybe Adam, this is a, a question for you. Sure. Um, should should they immediately start seeding? Is it something they just need to evaluate to see how things progress a little bit? Um, you know, we talked about not wanting to jump the gun on anything. So how, how do we do? How do we go about doing that? Yeah. Well, the first step in we've got turf managers across the entire region that have been you know miles ahead of this is to just sort of be as honest with their you know owner, their board, their their golfers as as they can, and just say, all right, we think we have a problem. We're not entirely sure how bad it's going to be. We need to prepare for the worst and you know, hope for the best and, and try to get the lines of communication open to manage those expectations, especially early in the season. Uh, but when it comes to recovery, it, it's, you know, obviously a course by course basis. I think everyone would agree seeding is going to be the best method uh, in terms of long term success. Um, but, you know, that's a challenge when it comes to, hey, if we sod it, it looks great. We can probably play on it a little bit quicker. Um, but in my experience, that sod, unless it's sod from a nursery that's matching turf with even matching soil is important, um, I would say that sod is very likely to go through a, a pretty big period where it's, it's got some ups and downs. It'll typically look good and, and perform poorly. Um, and so seeding, it really starts with, you know, creating as good of a seabed as possible, and that's a combination usually of some close center aeration, usually with some, you know, shallow verticutting in two or three directions combined, uh, applying seed, applying some starter fertilizer to help get some phosphorus in the soil and, and ready for that seed to germinate, uh, and then trying to do what you can to warm the soils, whether that be black sand, uh, some sort of a, a permeable cover that breathes, uh, anything that can stimulate some growth earlier than what you'd otherwise have to do it, keeping in mind you have to have the staff to manage that cover system. Uh, but that's been a huge success with a lot of the courses that have dealt with winter injury um, you know, over, over the past few years. So uh, that's important. Restricting traffic is a tough pill to swallow, but temporary greens every time are going to result in a faster and more sustainable recovery uh, when you have some damage. But if it's isolated, you can cover that area and maybe keep the green open and just rotate whole locations around it. Um, but just sort of, you know, trying to get the lines of communication open early and, you know, doing, again, what's best agronomically as opposed to, you know, maybe what's best for the revenue stream short term. Very good. Kel or Joel, you have anything to add to what Adam had said? Go ahead, Kel. You know, it's, it's a lot of the same things that we've already talked about. It's the traffic management. It's, you know, being patient. I think that's a huge, I mean, if, if I were a golf course manager, I would like go to my printer, I would print that thing out and put it in about three different places in my office to tell me to be patient with this stuff because it's going to be a slow process. Um, if you're getting into the renovation thing, again, we get the conversation of, you know, the way a lot of these folks are going to do this is they're going to take a piece of equipment that's relatively heavy, try and poke holes in the ground, trying to put, uh, you know, seed into the ground. You know, be very, very careful with that heavy piece of equipment. Uh, maybe some sort of a, a walk behind slit seeder is going to be more appropriate. And then the other part of this is, you know, everyone's very, very price conscious on things. But I've, I've always talked about sort of the Papa John's principle. And it's the idea of, you know, better ingredients make better pizza is be very, very careful with the seed that you're purchasing. You know, just because, uh, you know, it's, it's a quote unquote good deal, it might not necessarily be a good deal. The last thing you want to be doing is, you know, buying something that's contaminated with some things that you don't necessarily want, and you're already introducing that into an area that you have some thin areas. So uh, that's going to be extremely important as well. Yeah. You know, Adam made a couple great points, and, you know, one of the things that we all have to think about, and, and we're kind of going around and around on the same topic, but it's almost April, and, you know, a lot of our winters kind of, you know, are ending up in early March, and, and or at least the middle of March. I mean, this is one of the longest winters certainly in the Northeast here, that we've had in a long time. So we got to understand that we're going to come out of this shoot here uh, into the core of spring, if not already into summer. So, you know, maybe that helps make decisions uh, or change decisions. You know, sod could really take a beating if uh, you're doing a lot of work with sod between now and then, because it's going to probably get hot, most likely. Uh, at least we got to be prepared for that. So 
you know, understanding that this has been an incredibly long winter and it's already April to all intents and purposes before we even start anything. Uh, by the time, you know, the, the courses in this area are even up and running, it's going to be the middle of the, or the end of April. So it's, you know, it's a whole different ball game this year than it has been. I mean, I'm, I'm probably the eldest been on this panel and seen a lot of these lovely winters. And when you have a late winter like this, you typically get hammered with tough springs and early summers. So, you know, be prepared for that. Treat your soil well. I mean, manage the soil as well as the, the turf. And, you know, and, and, and again, just focus on oxygen. But be prepared for anything Mother Nature's going to throw at us because she's been throwing, you know, hard balls uh, at us all winter long. All right. Well, I guess the, the last question to kind of wrap things up here, and Adam, I'll, I'll pose this to you. You know, um, before you'd have members playing other golf courses around you and come back and say, well, so-and-so's doing this, so-and-so's do that. Well, we've got a whole new dynamic. It's called social media. And, I mean, everybody is following everybody. And it's not just fellow superintendents or turf managers. It's, it's members reading golf course blogs and following on Twitter and following on Facebook. And it's courses pushing messages out on Facebook. And, you know, maybe it could be the, the course's membership director pushing, you know, lovely summer pictures out on Facebook. And somebody doesn't know that it's not an actual real picture of, of the condition. So... How do superintendents and turf managers ma manage, you know, the the expectations with the 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 beating they're going to get? Uh, because people are going to see this on social media, uh, whether again whether it's Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, about what other courses and what other properties are doing and what successes and failures they are having. How how do you handle that? Yeah, well, that's times have certainly changed, and you know, speaking from someone who. Is, is by far the youngest on the panel. Um, it's been interesting to talk to some of the guys, especially in, in the metropolitan area that I work with, that you know talk about the old days, and they and they used to have it easy. Um, whatever Wingfoot did, everyone else <coughs> did as, as well. It was an easy decision. If Wingfoot would clear snow, everyone else would do it because hey, that's what they were doing. Um, you know, some of that still still goes on, but it's not quite as easy as that. And I was just having a discussion uh, yesterday. We had a green section seminar meeting in Andover, Massachusetts, and I, I don't know what the website was, but it apparently has listings of course openings, and <laughs> Andover was, I believe, on the course openings list, although, you know, everyone there was kind of shaking their heads, well, this course isn't open. I mean, they still have greens covers on. It's, you know, so I would say one of the challenges is to, once there's information out there, whether it's social media or something, maybe that's, you know, a little bit more official than social media. Um, keep that in mind that if you're under that type of pressure as a superintendent, you know, double check, check with the course and find out. Hey, are are you guys really open, or you know, what's going on at your facility as opposed to just trusting these these sites? But um, yeah, it, it's a it's a pretty significant challenge, and I think when it boils down to it, every golf course is different, and you know, it's not an easy thing to explain when it comes to you know, your general manager or green chairman or owner uh, asking, you know, why, you know, we did something different or why we're not open yet and someone else is. Um, but that's kind of the, the the most reliable answer is, hey, we, we're dealing with maybe different soils or we've got different types of greens construction that are forcing a, us to, you know, hold off or, or, you know, this is why we've had these situations develop. We've got more undulations, more trees, you name it. Um, there's a lot of reasons and I think it's, Again, it's kind of a generic answer, but you know, with being every course as different as what they are, um, that's kind of the the easiest standby to to go back to, and and ultimately, it's something that should make sense to the the people that that are sort of putting the pressure on the superintendent. Um, Very good. Should make sense, but yeah, doesn't always work that way. Yeah, Cal, I know you're big in social media. Do you have anything to to add in terms of what what you're seeing or what what's being said out there? Well, you know, it's only been like a week since we've actually seen the grass. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we're just getting to this point uh, of, of starting to assess what, what's actually there. And, and, and like Joel said, you know, I mean, April 1st is just next week, which is just amazing to me. So, um, uh, but no, I, I just had a few key final thoughts that I was just jotting down here. Uh, number one is, you know, telling these folks to be patient. I know it's easier said than done. Um, the other part of this is, is focusing on the soil environment. Uh, you know, working on things, you know, documenting where drainage needs to go in the future, you know, you know, creating that sand cap if you're, if you're stuck with those soils that are uh, very slowly permeable, 
uh, dealing with the gas gas exchange issues, you know, doing something in terms of venting. You know, there's so many really nice devices out there that you can you can do this very regularly, and, and it recovers quite quickly without uh, disrupting surface uniformity. Uh, the other part of that is, you know, we've touched on the idea of restricting traffic, or if you are in a situation where you've got to let the carts go or whatever, you know, somewhere schedule in later on to open that soil back up because, you know, those wet soils with that traffic, you are going to get some surface crusting and surface sealing that, you know, you don't know what the summer is going to be like, so that, that's potentially an issue. And then, you know, Adam touched on the idea of, uh, you know, the, the fungicide programs and, and things like that, being very, very diligent with that this spring. And, uh, you know, the last part of this, we were talking about the fertility part, is, you know, do the soil test, you know, get the information that you need because this year may be a little bit different. And where you are considering, you know, fertilization, uh, if there are deficiencies, the granulars are the way to go. Uh, but, you know, the, the holistic long-term program is, you know, a little bit now, a little bit later, you know, avoid those big pulses because uh, uh, the bill will come due. Yeah. Joel, you have anything to wrap up with? Yeah, I do, Bill. I mean, first of all, I commend you for uh, you know your ability to help everybody in this industry communicate. And I think really what you're asking for here, you know, to wrap up is the most important thing right now for any superintendent is communication, and that really starts with culture and culture within your organization and your management team, uh, but building that culture beyond even your staff, but build it into the entire. Uh, you know, culture of the country club or the golf course that you're working with so that everybody understands that, you know, these are the things that you're fighting on a regular basis. You know, we're going to we're gonna see in a few weeks Augusta and everybody's going to be all over that because, you know, it's Augusta and, you know, that's always a, a stress point for a superintendent. But again, building that culture within your staff so that communication can, you know, can extend beyond just you but through the entire staff so that everybody in that club Every member understands the pressures that you've been under through the winter, uh, understands the fact that, as we've said a couple times, we're going to be saturated for a long time. We're going to be hit with a lot of things. Just find a good way to get um, that information out to everybody and do it on a regular basis. I mean, you're seeing a lot of guys putting out blogs now to their membership. It's phenomenal. That level of communication and building that culture where they understand that this guy is part of us and he's with us and he's he's on our side as opposed to being just some guy pushing a mower. Uh, I mean, these are real important things and social media is key in all that because it's such a great way to get out there. And most, I would assume most golf course members these days are looking at their phone on a regular basis, you know, going on social media sites and it's a great way to get information out there, and you know we we've certainly talked on the cultural issues. Those are the issues that you talk about. These are the problems that we've had, and uh, let everybody know uh, that you're you know you're there to help them. And, and just like I said, build a culture. Very good, Adam. Any final closing thoughts? Yeah, I, I that's a great point that Joel made, and you know one of the things dealing with a lot of superintendents uh, that I work with, they they'll comment, well, you know I, I put this work into the blog, and no one ever reads it, or no one you know no one looks at my Twitter. You know, part of that is you educating them that you've got these sites there. This is good information for them. Um, you know, you almost have to sell that blog initially, and then once it catches on, it, it really catches on. And the, the the core the core golfers that really want the information are gonna look, gonna go and look, and the others that really, you know, just sort of go about their business and and aren't all that concerned are not going to. But, you know, I wouldn't not you know try to force communication lines open with a blog or with Twitter or whatever. Um, for fear of people not, you know, going out and looking at the information, um, it's not difficult to put these things together. And once you get the right folks involved, um, it, it's going to gain some some popularity and some following. It's a great communication tool. Very good. Well, guys, thank you very much for taking the time out of your schedule. I know, Kale, you're getting ready to jump on a plane, so I appreciate you you taking the time before heading over to the airport. Uh, Adam, thank you very much. Joel, thank you as well. Um, just one final thought from our sponsor, Gen Next. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Uh, for a quick and complete healing from all winter damage, use Gennex Complete A and B, which is an organic plant nutrition product that naturally maximizes a plant's ability to recover from stress. This balanced turf grass formulation contains the essential microbial uh, byproducts, organic hormones, extracts, and enzyme complexes along with a balanced macro nutrition formula. These products have been universally tested, give real world results. Uh, guys, thank you again very much. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. This is Turf Republic Turf Talks. Have a good one. Bye now.